Hi guys, um, my name is Daniel Ressler and I am a amateur programmer. I'm a chemical engineer by trade, but uh, I've been um, doing this for fun for a little while. Uh, let's see if I can get the stream on. Ubuntu likes to snap. So right now what I have right here are two very, very cheap smartphones. And I'm going to try to um, keep them on. They might shut off mid-presentation. Can everybody see that? I'm going to increase the size a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. That's what <laughs> I told you. It was going to take a little bit of time to set up since. So what happened a couple of months ago is Firefox Mozilla introduced their own operating system. And that operating system is basically Gecko. It's, it's kind of like Chrome OS. And so all of the apps, like this entire settings page, is HTML5. And one of the interesting things about that is that um, it allows all of the Gecko possibilities, all of the HTML5 possibilities, including D3, to be all of a sudden able to be composed on a, uh, on a very, very low-end phone browser. So I'm going to go into these phones. Let me adjust the brightness down a little bit. To is that better? Oh, a little too high. OK. Um, is that, can everybody see those kind of well? Yep. Awesome. Finally set up. OK. So anyway, this is, uh, this is basically taking a look at what, how cheap is cheap. Oh, I should probably put that on. Always on top. Here we go. Good old one, too. OK. So how cheap is cheap? This phone right here is the um, is the AT&T Fusion 2 which is a 79 I bought it for $79 no contract um, but you can get it now for about $70 so it's a little bit older this Firefox phone is um, a ZTE open and it's also $79 when I bought it um, they want the left one has 512 megabytes of RAM and the right one has 256 megabytes of RAM. So this is like the lowest end of GPS enabled and uh, Android enabled phones. And the weird thing about Android is they don't really cater to these phones at all. And so you're kind of stuck in the late 2.3 realm. And so I'm running CyanogenMod on, uh, on the Android phone right here. But you really can't run Jelly Bean or Ice Cream Sandwich or anything higher than that. And so a lot of these developing world phones um, are kind of relegated to that uh, uh, to that later end status. So is SVG supported? So let's start out with the default browser. Um, hopefully I can reload this maybe, refresh. Okay, so go right here. Next is not supported, okay? But if I go to Opera, and then Chrome of course is only supported on 4 plus 0 on Android phones, so um, that's a problem. I wonder, I thought I had this bookmarked. Bookmarks, here we go. Um, okay, so I'm loading this again, and it works. Hooray! And then, of course, Firefox works as well. And then on this phone, that was just a bookmark on the screen. So it also works. And so when, once you get into the Opera, Opera and uh, Gecko or Mozilla, uh, based browsers on these low-end phones is when you start to actually have SVG access at all. Um, and so what can you do with that? Uh, first off, this is of course the uh, static chart. Um, now let's add some circles. So see where they start to lag out. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just adding a whole bunch of circles. See how it's starting to take a little bit of time in between when I tap the button. Same thing for the uh, so this is just sheer number of nodes to see what it can handle. And it's around uh, 1,000 on the Firefox phone and about 500 on the, uh, on the Android phone. And keep in mind, the Android phone has double the amount of RAM that the Firefox phone does. So next up is movement. That's probably kind of. Um, so each one of these nodes is, has a transition attached to it as I ramp it up. So that's nine transitions, that's 25 transitions, et cetera. And so at 25, you're starting to see quite a bit of lag. 
49 is getting really laggy. On the Firefox phone, it stays pretty good. So you get it to around 160 or so. Okay, so keep in mind, again, half the amount of RAM. Um, so next up is force directed. And the crazy thing about these is they're, they're definitely gonna crash at some point. So I'll, I'll definitely have to refresh these a little bit. Um, let's go back and see if we can get, yeah, there we go. Um, as we start to add in on the Firefox phone, that's one thing where the Firefox phone starts to lag out a little bit pretty early on. It's probably pretty comparable with the Android. So 25 is pretty just halting. Ah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is, of course, an alpha version of Firefox OS. So yeah, go ahead. Does GPU acceleration work on any phone, like the more high-end phone? Actually, yeah. So GPU acceleration works by default in Gecko. Um, and so Firefox, I think, in Android also has it. But the problem is it's you know Gecko sitting on top of the Java virtual machine ver on top of the Linux kernel. So there's a whole bunch of layers in between. And there's a whole bunch of overhead with the phone itself. So the, the problem with this is that I didn't have time to This is all one page. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm basically taking a, a script snippet, which is uh, a snippet of that. It's uh, when you look at the, it's actually in a text box. And then I put it into the DOM and e eval it is how I'm keeping the memory low. But the problem is you have to refresh the screen for the automatic garbage collection to, to go in and, and get rid of the existing memory. So when I added all those nodes, I think it, it builds up over time. So um, ideally, these would be separate pages, but oh well. OK, uh, let's see here. Force directed. Nope, back. That's actually one of the biggest frustrations with these phones is their screens. And I'll demonstrate this a little bit, um, is, the, uh, is the touch precision on the screens is actually really, really terrible. Um, and so that's one of the things that I'm going to demonstrate is one of the limitations of these. I'm going to actually refresh this one so I can get rid of the, um, the junk in it. All right. So force directed. It's still pretty good. It's, a, it's still a lot better for having half the RAM um, at around 25 nodes. Um, scaling is interesting uh, because if you see here, this scale 1.0 is actually a string as far as the attribute for SVG. And so you actually have to parse that. It's not like a transition where you change the location as an integer. And so it actually lags out much more quickly than the movement um, did because you're changing an attribute to the SVG that has to be parsed as a string. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. OK, great. Um, anybody have any questions so far? No? OK. Um, so yeah, hooray for, for Firefox OS um, on D3. OK, so hover. Um, obviously, the hover event, actually, I'm going to show that. OK, so on mouse move um, is the event that I'm firing whenever I'm um, moving this thing or moving the red dot. And it doesn't work. But if I were to, I actually have a. Uh, and drag this over, see if I can do that. Nope. Uh, move my mouse over. So I just have it in a browser right here. And if I go to the same hover page, it actually hovers around. So it does, that's one thing, if you're building visualizations um, with SVG or D3 that's built for mobile, mouse does not translate over very well. Um, so that's one thing you just kind of kind of keep in mind. All right, touch events. Did it crash again? Oh, son of a. All right. This is like a nightly build, so. Okay. Where were we? Hover. So what instead of hover you have to use is actually the touch. Um, so touch move. And so if you use touch move, it'll follow around um, your finger pretty well on Firefox. But uh, on here, it starts to lag out quite a bit. Um, 
And so touching even on uh, on uh, non-Firefox phones is kind of is kind of um, laggy whenever you uh, get into the lower end market. So multi-touch, um, touch the uh, the touch move event actually comes as an array of coordinates. And so if there's multiple touch, you just see if there's multiple uh, or, uh, items in the array. And so on this, this is actually how I noticed that the screens are pretty terrible, is you can get two in the corners, but once you move your fingers together, they seem they all of a sudden become one touch point. So that's what fires to the browser as an event. But once you move it apart, it'll come across. And good luck trying to get three in there. It's probably not going to happen. I can do I can do three and four if you pull this uh, website up on your on your smartphone. That's like um, a lot better in Jelly Bean or above. Um, it'll you can definitely get four four fingers on there. But uh, this is kind of limited. And the same goes for Firefoxes. Once you once you bring your fingers close enough, it actually becomes one one touch event. And so pinching and zooming, um, which is the next one, which is interaction, um, is actually pretty difficult. It's really spotty. It's a little bit smoother on this one because the, uh, the touch events are a lot, a lot easier to get in and fire a lot faster. Um, this one's pretty laggy. But once I add the second one, it gets pretty spotty. Oh, dear. Come on. OK. <laughs> uh, questions so far? Yeah? Uh, do either of these phones have Zoom natively? Uh, they do. I specifically set these web pages as uh, uh, being the max browser width or default browser width. So like if I were to, yeah, so the question was, um, do I need to repeat the question for the, OK, yeah. The question was, does Zoom work at all? Um, I haven't tried the D3 Zoom version. Um, that's something that would be pretty easy to add a test for. I wanted to keep my interactions pretty short. I did want to go through the whole library. Um, but uh, I would assume that it does, since like anything that you can do in Firefox 26, I guess, you can also do on this phone. Um, it contains WebRTC and all of the fancy you know, hash you know, web crypto stuff that they're starting to include. It's a, it's a really interesting concept that you can get that kind of power on something that's eighty dollars. So, um, anyway, so complex interaction. This uh, basically takes um, a cascade uh, of transitions. So when one transition ends, it causes the next one to do, and so when you move it back and forth, it'll add a little bit of snaky motion to it. Same thing goes for this one. Oh, dear. But obviously, since the touch move events are, are take a lot of effort to do, it'll, uh, it'll lag out quite a bit. But then we can add in a whole bunch of nodes. And it's kind of a cool little visualization. Um, if we add those in over here, uh, it's probably not going to end well. Oh, oh, come on. You got it. Oh, I tried. That's a good effort. Um, so we can even go up to, so the transition is really interesting. This actually shows how SVG works really well um, with only catching a few nodes at a time or only moving the nodes that it has to and ignoring the rest. If I do this really quickly, it's fast, and then it slows down once I start to move a whole lot because these are transitions that it has to keep up with, but once it gets back up to the top, it'll actually go back to only, oh, I only need to move x many nodes. I don't have to move as many, and it'll speed back up again. So that's one of the cool things that I, that I figured, found out about this. And so the next thing is, um, since this is Gecko sitting on top of the Linux kernel, um, you actually have access to hardware. And so for the Firefox phone, I can actually, if I tilt it up, it's like a little level app. And so this is just an SVG. Oh, god. Uh, you see how the circle's moving a little bit? It's kind of hard to show. But uh, anyway, so it allows you to start to integrate SVG into applications um, that have hardware access. So 
anyway, um, any other questions so far? I think that's actually about it. Oh, that was the hardware thing. So right here, I'm using the on-device orientation um, API, which actually gives you the uh, orientation. So conclusions, um, since SVG isn't default, D3 apps aren't available to most users on the sub $100 phone market. Um, and when I say sub $100 phone, I mean the sub $100 phone outright. Uh, I think the Nexus G was what, $179 that came out recently? And that is able to run uh, 4.0 and above. And so you can get SVG on that. But um, I think that the Firefox OS has a large potential for D3 integration. And since their target market is is the lower end phone market. Um, there's a lot of potential access for D3 developers and SVG um, use in, in that kind of market. So that is my presentation. Questions? Yes. So the faster one was the Firefox OS? Yeah, so this one's the Firefox OS. Um, and since, yeah, exactly. So I can't use most recent builds of Android on this phone because the hardware specs are too low for it, um, even though they're double the size of this phone. <laughs> yeah. Is it odd that it's not much better on an iPhone 5? I just tried it. Oh, you just tried it? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's slightly better, but not much. Yeah. Well, I think that um, the problem with iPhones is that they don't allow, uh, is it just, just in time compiling for JavaScript in apps? I don't know if that's true or not, but I feel like the hardware acceleration for, uh, for D3 um, is like for CSS transitions or, or movement or, or SVG updates. I don't know that that's very good in that. If somebody has a, a 4.0 phone, and wants to come up here and slide it under here and, and show the difference, I would love to, if we're, we have time for it, but obviously. Yeah, come on. Uh, let me go back to the start so you can type in the, yeah, yeah, let me grab it. It's right down there at the bottom. So it's my username, diphyg.github.io dash or slash D3 cheap. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Should have gotten a short URL. Um, anyway, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, how is garbage collection going to like? So if you go on like a big D3 object and then mm -hmm. go to an Xbox. That's actually why, uh, so the question was how is garbage collection? Um, is how is it on, uh, on a lot of nodes on small phones? It's pretty bad. Um, Supposedly, when you delete a node, you're supposed to, you know, clean it up. It's supposed to get garbage collected, but it doesn't. That doesn't necessarily always happen. As when I, when I went through those first couple of slides and I added thousands of nodes, and then I went and then the browser crashed. So that kind of that kind of thing happens pretty regularly. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily count on destroying a piece of the DOM and expecting it to clear up memory. Um, that's something that you would have to investigate or or work on a lot more. I just didn't have really a lot of time to investigate that a little bit. And so this is on a, what is this, iPhone 5? OK, SVG works. Come on, there we go. It's actually doing pretty well. All right. It's doing really well on the movement. Force directed. Yeah, man. This device must have cost like $600 or something. <laughs> yeah, that's doing good. That's actually really, really good for this. Oh, oh yeah? Oh, God. What just happened there? Okay. We don't have any of that fancy copy paste stuff in. Uh oh. Oh, okay. It's yeah. That's really interesting. So even on the the touch move event. I don't think that's a performance thing. I think that's because you need to do something on your like to make it not respond and scroll. Up. Is there a way that you can get screens to not 
bounce yeah, up and I've down? I've actually been working on this recently. The, the old way was you actually had to say somewhere, I forget, view port scroll opal equals none or something like that. Okay, so and the Brand's, comment was for the- Brand spanking knew there's a full screen mode. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, okay. It won't, it won't move at all. Gotcha. Oh, that, that browser is Chrome also. Well, it's WebKit, but it's Safari. Oh, it's, this is Chrome? Oh, okay. Wow, well, I should, yeah, so who knows? Yeah, it does use Safari's WebKit because, yeah, with this, it's going to be hard to demonstrate those, unfortunately. And then, of course, it doesn't have access to hardware. But it was, it was actually pretty good for the, uh, here you go, thank you. Um, pretty good for the, uh, the scaling. That was impressive on that. So you could definitely tell that that was a more beefy phone. Um, any other questions? All right. Thank. Yeah. Do you have a particular? I mean, most people I know are always upgrading their phones. Is there a particular like app you have in mind that you're you want to target these low end? Uh, I don't. Um, I I was impressed by Firefox's pitch, which was there's not really somebody trying to bring modern web technologies to the developing world. Uh, because Android is not interested in developing for these very low-end phones that are going to be the mainstay of that world. Um, and so you're not going to have, you know, HTML5 video and, and all of that HTML5 fun stuff that we are now dealing with in, in our world available to them except for like two years behind schedule, essentially. And so Firefox is looking to disrupt that. And, and by disruption, they want to use SVG? They, they just want to make all of the modern HTML technology available to lower-end phones, um, which currently isn't there. So. so like exactly. I mean, this is just a developer phone, but the idea is you want to have an operating system that is optimized for the 256 megabyte market. Okay. Thank you, guys.